Hello and welcome to The Wise Why. This morning I am joined by Darren Evans, who I met on an Oxlep course, and we instantly bonded, and I don't know how, but he managed to twist my arm and put it right up my back. So, as usual, the show is not about me, the show is about my guest. So, Darren, over to you, and you can explain how you twisted my arm. <laughs> Hi, Kirsty. Great to be here. Um, I don't know is the honest answer. I think when we met at Oxlep, um, I think we found out that previously we we were kind of thespians, weren't we? we were. Or we'd had that sort of similar background. And I think when we started engaging and talking about that, it was uh, it was of interest. Yeah, and, of and, and the fact that we're both supported by Oxlep, as I said, um, they, you know, they're they're just fantastic. I, the whole team, I can't say enough about. To, to be fair, it's um, huge huge amount of of um, thanks to give. I think. Yeah, you and, said you said that. Yeah, and to Leslie Parsons as an example, both fantastic, really, really supportive. Catherine Shepherd, when when you know just applying for initially, um, were, 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 were brilliant. Um, Sarah Beale, Grant Hayward, Helen Brind, there are loads and loads of people to, to 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 you know even the marketing team, the people behind the scenes, they're all so so fantastic, really, really supportive. I would encourage any Oxfordshire business, whether you're a startup medium-sized or enterprise to engage with Oxlep because they are they are just brilliant. We must explain what they are. Um, so they do peer-to-peer -peer networking. They do have access to business coaches of various different levels. Uh, they will help you apply for funding. So there are a lot now. I probably get this wrong. Local Enterprise Partnership, I That's think. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Oh, Local cute. Um, yeah. And there's various of them around the country. And yeah. most importantly, they are free, everybody. They're free for businesses like you and me. So really good plug for Oxlet, which I wasn't expecting to do this morning. So more about you, Darren. Yeah. Tell us about your life and how you've got to where you are today. And I've got to make sure that I call it after cloud and not after life. I have no idea why I get them confused. But it would be really good to explain who you are, what you do, and especially about AfterCloud because people don't know it and it's absolutely incredible. Thanks very much. Um, right. Mine's a little bit checkered, I think. If I go right the way back, I left school at sort of 16, uh, straight into the army. So so I was a, I was in the army for, you know, eight, nine years as a military training instructor. And um, I left, I went into banking and then finance and then publishing and it was just yeah not really for me really that kind of world but i did it for, for for a while um then i don't know if you remember do you remember when the 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 internet was kind of just emerging really all the balls were up in the air and um so i i started working in in that in that area really i had a few ideas at the time but just just started working with other businesses um which which you know which led to something else which led to something else but i ended up providing technology to health and social care companies for a little over 20 years plus probably <laughs> um and then a, a little over three years ago um my my wife pam and my sister-in-law cam were primary carers for my mother-in-law she had a very aggressive form of lewy body dementia it's a horrid horrid disease uh, any form of dementia is you know it's not good, is it? it, it it's, um, you know, for anybody that's out there that that uh, is either caring for someone with dementia or living with someone living well with dementia even, uh, I applaud you in your work and all the carers that support them. Anyway, we it was very, very aggressive uh, with, with my mother-in-law and it literally within 10 months, she, she died. Um, and we were going, you know, when after the funeral, we were going through, you know, family possessions and and uh, this one instance in particular is the thing that sort of struck out really, I guess, the light bulb moment. We were going through a family photo album and my son, Dylan, was asking Pam, my wife, who's this, who's that, who's this? And we had no idea. Asked a sister, asked a brother, cousins, nobody had a clue. So we quickly realized that when someone dies, that whole library of information, uh, family history, even it's gone, it's eradicated, and you can't get it back. And uh, interestingly, it was Dylan that said to me, "Look, Dad, you work in technology, can't you do something?" Or words to that effect. You know, out of the mouths of babes. He was kind of uh, eleven and a half, coming up to twelve at the time. 
and I kind of you know scratched my head a little bit and thought, wow, this is the, there might be something here. So I started speaking to people right across the sector, and um, one person in particular, I'll tell the story shortly if you if you don't mind. But well, of course, Roberta Rochella, um, Robbie, as, as she's known in in health and social care, head of quality of life, and um, she. And I remember this, but anyway, I'll come. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. <laughs> so, so with that, I, I reached out, and then I, I realised that in end of life, which is not something I'm familiar with at all, palliative care, they have this physical item called a memory box. So, for people that are nearing end of life, you know, they they know they're in, in receipt of palliative care. They're on. Um, it, it enables them to place cards, letters um important messages things for the future so posthumous posts essentially and uh, and then when they die they they're handed out and delivered accordingly and we thought well actually we can we can digitize this process we can enable technology to do that for them so that they can do it at any time in the comfort of their own you know, wherever they are if they're if they're in the community if they're in the home um so we did that and that was the first iteration of aftercloud uh, it's called moments um and uh, yeah so to answer your question that was the the light bulb moment and that's what happened it was originally called aftercloud so i'm sitting here right now thinking about the amount of memory boxes i currently have for a six-year-old child and thinking yeah i need to digitize that there yeah. is i mean we have got huge storage boxes and everything ha is is important so um i'm obviously going to be talking to you on about uh, digitizing my memories for, for our daughter because I'm an older mom and as an older mom I'm aware that and I'm very aware that you know she's six I'm in my 50s at some point she's going to be left without me it's one of those real glaring uh, facts that are really sh sh shouting your face when you're a, an older mother so we will talk about that off offline um, so you were talking about Roberta was it yeah Roberta Ricella yeah I ask you now because she's been married since firstly though can i just say you don't look your age at all <laughs> i love you for that keep it coming yeah. keep it no, coming it's true, it's true. <laughs> um, yeah robbie so when i spoke to robbie she she we just got talking and it was about the concept of after cloud and um she then she then told me this story and and it, it struck uh, struck a chord straight away but she she was from a single parent family um, and at the age of 13, her mum uh, had cancer and died from it. And she was, I mean, in, this was in Italy, and she was welcomed into her best friend's family and adopted by them, which I think is fantastic. But she had this, uh, you, you know, the old uh, uh, tape machines or, or voice recorders, and you had the yeah. tiny little tapes. So she had a little tiny tape of her mum's voice and she lost the tape and yeah it when she told me that she said it's her voice i miss the most i wish i could hear her again and uh, i you know i quite, kind of welled up at the time and i wrote it down hurriedly and that became our strap line for aftercloud i said robbie you just said this to me do you mind it it, it just it just sings it you know it it tells that story succinctly and um so that's what we did we uh it's her voice I miss the most. Uh, I miss the most. I wish I could hear her again. Became uh, our strap line for a while. Uh, always there now because we 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 kind of in various markets. But that was the story of uh, of Robbie, and it was just she actually wrote for one of our guest blogs as well with the whole story behind it. Um, so it's there on the website for anybody to to, to view. I will have to look at that later. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I love the story, and I, that's one of the things I love about you is the way that you're connected. Uh, you're you know you are totally connected to the emotion of the people you're talking to it's one of the things that really inspires me about you even when we're you, you feel it you empathize it's just beautiful it's so time. it's all right <laughs> we know each other quite well um one of the things i want to ask about is that moment in tech because that's 20 years of your life it's quite a long time and i know that a lot of people who listen to the show are like me who were around at the birth of the internet because we're of a certain age and we were involved in that growth i mean i certainly was what what was it like because people today you know we think about six seven year olds and we think about 20 year olds and 20 year olds at the birth of the internet 
we're just being born, you know. So they've got no idea how us, I can't remember what generation we are, but uh, just picked it up. And Moran, I read something somewhere about how we're the generation that can't be sold to because we grew up without tech, we like tech, but we don't need tech. So I'm just wondering what it was like for you in the in the, that space. Yeah, are we Generation X, I think, are we? I think we are. I just don't want to say it in case I get it wrong live on air. <laughs> I just remember Billy Idol. <laughs> um, yeah, no, do you know, it's, it's a really interesting question, actually, because if you can imagine now how people are feeling about AI. Yeah. It's a kind of similar. It's a kind of similar thought process, isn't it? it, it uh, and also, and this is, I use this analogy quite a bit, but uh, a long, long time, you know, in our early twenties, let's say, because I think we're a similar. I'm probably slightly older, but we're similar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> driving for miles and miles and miles, and I lived in Germany for a while, but driving back from Germany with a map, with a you know, with a a, a map, a physical book of map, no mobile phone. Um, mobile phones didn't exist back then so it's kind of it we've gone through those te technological revolutions a number of times including the internet and and if you can imagine you know this is an example you and i speaking over the internet this yeah. was star wars this was fiction <laughs> science fiction actually you know um so yeah we've seen a lot of changes in that time but it but but i i compare it now um, the sort of birth of the internet as 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 the similar sort of concept of AI because it's it, it has has such huge implications I think for mankind it's 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 phenomenal. Yeah, I I have been using AI for the last six seven weeks and I can remember six seven weeks ago starting with it writing things in asking it a question it was really fun and now it's become like a standard in in my my life and I've actually got a video that I must post about how. AI is really, really good. So I won't mention the brands, but you can put your, your information there. They can churn it out, which is great, but it is still a robot. And you do need to then go and edit it and turn it into something that is human. But it does streamline and save time. And especially as a dyslexic, it's become an invaluable tool to my business. I'm not going to sit there and say it hasn't. It has, you know, I can, I can quickly take something, edit it, turn it to the purpose I need it to be, and then go in and put the Kirsty Vanderbilt bulk spiel on it and, and, and feel to it. It's been revolutionary. Yeah. But again, that is like the internet, because, I mean, we remember the time where you had to plug your, your connector in and you dialed up through a router and that beautiful noise. Yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> So you were probably like me, where my first... I'm going to ask you. So the first computer that I touched was a Sinclair ZX Spectrum what about you exactly the same yeah <laughs> yeah exactly the same. and I do remember the Atari as well that you know the little... I yeah. love the Atari and the Commodore 66 was it the 1660 yeah. 16? anyway uh, it takes me way back to when I was working in orders department stores so we've been able to embrace and grow and adapt to the tech and ultimately that's what AfterCloud is doing. And what I really like about AfterCloud that you haven't talked about yet is how we could access it if we're out in public on a phone. <laughs> yeah. Let me talk about that. <laughs> well, um, it's, what's interesting, when we when we started AfterCloud, so it, it, we launched it as AfterCloud, and we worked with with a, a number of some fantastic hospices, actually. I have to say, give thanks to them as well. Arthur Rank, I'll shout out now because we still work with them and do a lot of work. Um, but anyway, w during that early phase, we did a lot of beta trials, so 10 months or so of, of beta trial, you know, just to make sure that it was impactful, we were doing the right thing and get that. Can I stop you there for just for a minute? Because I know what beta is, but a lot of people don't. So could you just explain what beta is to, and then we'll move on. It's just, it's really good for people who are listening, you go, oh, I don't know what that is. And then they might lose attention because they just have no idea. So can you explain a bit more about what that is? Yeah, it's, it's sort of running a, a pilot or running without going live. It's it's a sort of behind the scenes trial. Um, they, they have the app, it's working for them, but it's not available to the public. Awesome. Um, so, so that was the beta, 10 months of, 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 of backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, getting iteration, getting feedback. Um, and, and I mean, we've, we've got some really good IP within within our technology. 
intellectual property. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> I know, but we, so this is one of the things that, that I talk about quite a lot is in industry jargon, in industry talking, which um, mm. as a, when we were talking about marketing, that's really good if we know what we're talking about, we understand it. If we don't understand it, it becomes a buzzword and jargon and really confusing. So I do always want people to expand on it because there's nothing worse than feeling like, oh, I don't know what that is. Now today yeah. we're lucky we can type it into Google and go and check. Oh, sorry, I mentioned a brand, but you can type it into a search engine and see who it is and 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 what it means. But we should, I feel sometimes we should give that extra bit just so we we can be inclusive rather than oh I sound good inclusive rather than exclusive anyway back up to um, IP <laughs> yeah well, what we do is we we enable people to so from their mobile and they can access the app we're mobile first we have a mobile first policy because it's you know it's in your hand it's everyone's got a mobile pretty much now daily and um, and it enables you to to upload letters images video and audio. And again, because people miss the voice. So it's not just that, it's daily journaling. We've, we, you know, we've got now three apps. So from the beta, a lot of the feedback was, this is this is great, works fantastic. They're able to future post, so they can post to a future date, i.e. what would potentially be posthumous. Um, but they wanted to see physically a sort of timeline of their life. So they wanted these moments, but they wanted to see it chronologically plotted for them so we we thought this is this is great this is fantastic feedback so that's what we did um, as an iteration so we created another app utilizing the same technology and created another app called timelines um, uh, but what we realized is it's that's it, it's for everybody you know timelines is for everybody you don't realize how important it is until you lose somebody when that all when you know, that information is gone, it's lost. As an example, I mean, God bless him, Paul Grady earlier this week, um, nobody anticipated him dying, just, you know, there was there were no signs, he was not end of life, or, I mean, I know he had heart problems over the years, but um, in an instant, he's gone, and uh, as I say, it's affected a lot of people. We, you know, we, we grew up, what you know, watching him on TV as Lily, bless him. Um, so, so the nation's sort of, outpouring of love and affection for him this week has, has been, just been tremendous but um it's a sort of signal that you know we're, none of us are here forever there is an exit point for everybody and this is a kind of timelines is a kind of marker of your life the fact that you're here and also what's really really important is as our digital footprint grows and increases um it's important that that's managed in some respect as well so, so we're looking to do both things uh, with timelines, yeah. And the other thing, if I, if you don't mind me saying, is no, of course we, not. We also now support children's services from a digital it's perspective. Really important. Yeah. It, so it's it's kind of it's the whole gambit, really. It's children, adults, and and public. Um, yeah. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's but timelines are really important. I use timelines when I'm coaching um, because when you're public speaking or you're going to, like today when I said to you before you come on air, is there anything you won't talk about? And that's part of your timeline. That is something that could have happened in your life that is uncomfortable for you to share, but you need to be connected to the emotion so it doesn't overtake you. Mm. I think I put a post out about that actually this week. So timelines are a fundamental they're also things that um will allow you so when the memory box for our daughter it takes right the way through um all the way through from the time that she was really really small right up to the present day the memory box that i would love to be able to to deal with myself is actually a photo album and this is really lovely it's got an old lock and key it's a musical box and i used to sit when i was 17 15 16 and 17 with my granny who unfortunately passed away and we would go through it and of course this book is a photo a musical box that's a photo album and it is a card or hard, or it's wood, possibly, um, and the photos in it, we don't know, they go back to the 1800s, and we have yeah. no idea, now, obviously tech wasn't available then, but they're not even named on the back, or when they are named, the writing has worn away, so to be able to future-proof that happening 
for my daughter is is just beautiful picking up on Mother's Day, yeah, you know, it's Mother's Day, and I wanted to go and pick up something. And I picked up the Bible that Granny gave me in 1978 wow. for my confirmation, and it was falling apart. I mean, I did then put loads of beeswax on it, but and that's probably not the right thing to do. But it was falling apart. If I could have kept that sacred, even just an image of it sacred, without it falling to pieces, it's it's that kind of thing that it's emotional. It's, it helps you connect. And that's one of the things that I meant about you being emotive and connecting. And also, you are one of the most gracious people I know. You are full of gratitude. Oh. <laughs> <Make me blush. laughs> that's very kind. You know, the one thing I do do, and I think you give what you get. And if I can help anybody in any regard, I do. And people have looked at me in the past in, you know, in business development or sales roles as an example and I've gone look you know let's do this together let's help and then do, they kind of look at me strange we don't do that you know it's uh it but, but that's me you can't you know that's part of the character I guess isn't it but that is what sales is sales isn't about banging down the door and pitching at somebody and saying buy this product it is if it's a commercial product that hey you want to buy this moisturizer because it's going to make yourself feel feel good at that time and it's an impulse purchase but actually in the solution selling space it is about relationships and mm -hmm. it's about, you know, some of the stuff we, we've worked on have are not, yeah, you don't walk into a shop and pick something up because you're hungry. You're buying something because it's solving a, solu a problem and you're looking at a long-term solution sale that could take up to three or four years, maybe even longer for the project completion. And that way it's a partnership, not a sales pitch, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I, I agree. The other thing, and what well, certainly one thing I think that's helped me, and I, I discussed this yesterday with a colleague, Alan, um, this environment we're in now lends itself to a more authentic you. And, and, and the reason I say that is because we're in our home environment. Mostly we're in our home environments. So you can't be anything but yourself. It's many, many years ago, if you left the house to go and do, do some kind of work, you, you were a different persona almost. You know, you put your suit on to go to the business or you would put your jacket on to do this piece of work or whatever it might have been. Whereas now you get the genuine, authentic person. And I, I like that. I like this environment. And, and it lends itself to being that same person when you go outside. So I'm going to com admit something here this week because I've, I've had a massive deadline to, to deliver. And this week I went on a court. Now, I am an on-camera coach and everybody always sees me beautifully made up and wearing nice clean clothes. I went on a call at eight o'clock this week. They were put into into perspective, in, into, in, into a context. Uh, I had to look for the word there. Um, I didn't finish tying things off until 10.30 the night before. I had to get my daughter to school. I went on the call at eight o'clock and I'm really sorry to the people on the other end of the call because likely you weren't there, but I pulled my hair into a ponytail because I hadn't got a time for a shower and because my, my partner, my husband was away working and I hadn't even cleaned my teeth. <laughs> now that is really bad, but that is a blessing of the remote worker at this precise moment in time because there's absolutely no way I would have made the deadline and delivered what I needed to do if I hadn't been able to just throw on some slacks, look semi-professional from the top, and just crack on. That's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> so a little story there. I won't name names, but but um, at the birth of, of this environment, the virtual environment, um, uh, and again, I go back to the corporate world, but a colleague there, and, and some people will know this, He's synonymous within the sector in health and social care. But anyway, he, he did a virtual presentation and um, he thought he was off camera, didn't realise. So the whole, this whole, I mean, it was a local authority, huge room of people and didn't have his top on. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I it's shouldn't brilliant. laugh and I'm not laughing. But there is that thing. And obviously I what I love about this week is all my brand standards went out of the window uh, from the point of view of dedicated work to deliver this this body of work and it has been hectic it has been crazy um, but it's been a lot of fun as well and it's really stretched my mind and it's been brilliant and um, I'm really hoping we get a tick box and if we don't I shall go back to putting my head down and making this thing work but oh my goodness yeah um, sometimes you just have to go with the flow, right? 
You do, absolutely. You'll, you'll, it'll be great. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. <laughs> but if it's not, it'll just be edited. So um, along the way, you will have had aha moments. You'd have had moments where you went, yes, I know why I'm doing this, or no, I have no idea why I'm doing this. So um, I wonder if you could just talk about a few of those. Yeah, one I, I, one person actually, Ant, Ant Parsons, invited me along to a Visitor Economy webinar. And, um, you know, we the, the aha moment really actually came from when a, a business called Mindful Memorials up in Leeds applied timelines we so when you create a timeline and you publish a timeline it generates a qr code so that qr code is unique to that timeline and they put the they put the qr code on, on on a gravestone called the percy shelley for their showroom um and and people can go along you can you know utilize your mobile it with the camera it accesses the qr and then gives the backstory the whole history of percy and you can look at it in date order as it as it's chronological and it will pull up you know audio video letters images etc etc as i mentioned earlier and then with the visitor economy in mind it kind of lent itself very very well to uh, fixed fixed assets and that was the aha moment actually to, during the visitor economy piece um which kind of opened up another opportunity i guess so without losing sight of what we do from an impact perspective the aha was right we can offer timelines to both individuals the public and um businesses be it you know local authorities dmos the, the, the management organizations that run the visitor economy regionally um but what we really want to do is make a real purposeful impact it's really really important for us in terms of where we started the journey uh, dementia and, and, and end of life palliative so we decided literally just a few weeks ago that what we'll do our next um, kind of iteration if you will is for every timeline purchase we will gift our moment to uh, someone in palliative care or living with dementia so that's our impact and that was the aha bit really wow wow that is absolutely beautiful i hope you're going to market that because that is really paying it forwards that's beautiful yeah, it, it not only it not only creates social impact for us but it actually creates social impact for the community members so everybody that that, that creates a timeline for themselves or for their families or for their grandparents or the parents they know they're also having an impact for someone you know at the end of life or living with dementia who can also create now a legacy that's just beautiful yeah, it's abs absolutely beautiful. Um, wow. So we've had a couple of comments, which is just beautiful. As be I've got the word beautiful on the brain this morning. I need to change that one. Um, that's going to come up and kick me in the transcript. Um, so Jonathan's joined us and said, good, good morning. Oh, Haley has said you're a charmer. <laughs> and she loves the sound of Timeland. So it's an app. Is it a photo library, etc.? Can you explain a bit more on that? Yeah, it, it's effectively a, a an app that enables you to apply key dates. It starts with your date of birth or, or whoever, you know, if, if it's a project, it starts with that project start date. So however you iterate it, but it starts with the date of birth. Um, you can then add, say, an image of yourself at school. The really important part is, though, you can add a narrative to that storyline with audio. So that information never gets lost. You mentioned the, the picture earlier on. And the fact that, you know, if you turn the picture over, there's something written on the back, but not always do we get that information. Well, in a timeline, you get the full picture because you, you can dictate a letter in there, as an example, and it'll type out the letter for you. Um, you can record a, a short audio of who's who in the photo, as an example. Left to right, we've got Auntie Mabel and Uncle David and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do all that sort of thing. And as I say, when you publish, you, you should publish anyway because it's it's a living, it's a living account of your life story. Uh, and for all of us, you know, we don't know when that end date is, so it's it's continuous. Um, and and I think the other thing is looking forward, um, utilizing, and we mentioned this earlier, AI and machine learning and the power of that. You know, who knows what's to come? Uh, there are all sorts of things we can start to look to do. Um, I've been speaking more recently and I will be speaking again to a, a huge brain in the UX UI design world called Simon Norris. 
Uh, he coined the phrase humanizing technology. Um, just a brilliant, brilliant mind. Um, but he will be uh, kind of, he's, he's, he's going back to uni to, to sort of do his PhD um, in AI. So we'll be having those conversations ongoing. It's just incredible what can be achieved. I'm loving this, and I can't. Well, I know I'm going to see how um, how this pans out. I'm really excited. So um, this is where the tables turn. This is where you get to ask a question on me. I have no idea what it is. I say this every week, and I'm sure people think I do, but I really don't. So off you go, fire away, and see if I can answer it. <laughs> well, I, I would I would ask actually, what's your why? Why why is the why of why is why? So um, the why is why is. Very simple. Um, I didn't intend to do a podcast. Uh, I'll come on to that in a minute. But uh, my why is my daughter. So uh, 100% it's B. Uh, and watching her, whilst I've been crazily busy over the last couple of weeks, um, watching her pride and seeing mummy as a somebody who does really big work was really important. I wanted her to feel that women can and will achieve um especially launching your own business from scratch is it's it's been a challenge but her, she's been beside me she's been watching she's she wants to she sits behind me when i'm really really busy on her tablet and she works behind me and i work on on here and she is a hundred percent the reason i do everything whatever i put out there i make sure that she would be happy to see it in the future um, I want her to know that you can come from nothing. You know, I came, I was born and grew up in a council estate. I was very lucky that I got a grant to go to a private dance drama school. I was very lucky to get into arts ed, but it was a grant student. I was a scholarship student. So, um, you know, I didn't leave school with the best academic results. I hadn't been diagnosed with the dyslexia at that point. I didn't know I was dyspraxic, which is hysterical because I was a professional dancer but it does make sense now. Um, so I want her to know that whatever the challenges are, and you know, let's remember the first one, I couldn't speak till I had an operation. So whatever your challenges are in life, you can keep going and you can achieve and you can survive. And I have survived an awful lot. It's um, a fantastic why. <laughs> it's an important why because um, she's already got to come and grow and be strong, even at the age of six. You know, she's already facing challenges. So I wanted her to be empowered. And the best way to do it, as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, because your child mirrors you, was to lead by example. So that was the big why. And the why's why happened because somebody I knew was struggling to go live on LinkedIn. And I thought, oh, I think I can meet that criteria. And I'd had two glasses of wine and pressed send. And then two weeks later, I launched a podcast which I didn't really plan, called The Wise Why, because everybody at the time was shouting out, know your why, and I found it rather offensive. So I decided to launch a podcast in my own crazy way of uh, basically being rude back at them. So <laughs> the irony came in, and that's why it's called The Wise Why, but it's actually why your wisdom, which is why it's The Wise Why. <laughs> it's fantastic, and it's, it's such a, a great cause. Yeah, I think it's really important that people get to hear about people like you, the people that wouldn't necessarily step up and be on the big podcasts out there. And, you know, this gets viewed a lot on LinkedIn, not so much on YouTube, not so much on Spotify, but it does get a huge audience and attraction on LinkedIn. And for me, knowing that you are being seen as an authentic human being, I'm not here to expose you. I'm not here to make you cry. I'm not looking for an exclusive. I'm just looking for you to be at your best. And you get a copy of it and you get to go and use it on social media and you get some brand identity for you personal branding that's free so that's kind of another reason behind it is it's my way of giving back we've had Jonathan join us um, and he says so it's a digital diary is it a subscription model and can I add things retrospectively back to after after cloud so yes and yes it is a subscription model you get it you get it initially free um, so that you can trial it and make sure that it's it's you know fit for purpose for you um, but they're after subscription model. And what's interesting is you can apply it retrospectively. What's really, really fascinating is we had a guy, uh, Michael Bork, and, you know, again, I owe a, a debt of gratitude, actually, to Michael because he um, he took the concept and applied it to his dad, who's a Crimean War veteran, and it, it blew up. 
I mean, it went viral. Um, he it got it got some notoriety. Uh, it, you know, Newsweek, uh, Metro, Daily Mail, and more recently, Paramount uh, in the states. He's based in, in in Boston, so he's applied this one to his dad. Uh, and Paramount have asked him, can can he can he do um, another case study? So he went and saw um, the daughter of the chief of police uh, of of Melrose in Boston. Um, and they've created another one now, uh, which is yet to be aired on TV. But uh, again, that that backs to to after cloud timelines. So yeah, it, you can apply it retrospectively. I actually think that that people love walking around graveyards and and seeing the backstory and the history. But you can't. You only get the you know the two dates, a little bit about the person, and a dash in between. So I see timelines as the digital dash. That information in between the two dates. Um, which you can really now visualize. So it's the sort of people's library of the future. I actually say that what we do is is ancestry real time because future generations will look back at this and see our rich history come to life. They won't, you know, um, it, it won't just be black and white paper. Uh, it, it'll be that full rich history, all of this that, we, that we're doing today, uh, which people can view, yeah. So Haley's just joined us and she says, um, I want a digital diary. I have five diaries I write for each of my kids, but sometimes I pick them up and it's been over a year since I picked them up. So could you make sure that you go onto LinkedIn and onto my YouTube channel and put the link in to Aftercloud or, or how to contact you? Um, I will put this on my website at some point. I'm just a bit behind. But if you could put that in the link so people know exactly how to contact you, and can I just say thank you so much for sharing your gratitude and sharing your time this morning. It's an absolute pleasure, Kirsty. Thank you. And thank you for all you do. It's much appreciated. No problem.